It's time to talk about developer communication. It's a really big topic, and frankly, I think there are far, far more important aspects to talk about, rather than the normal being all angry over a particular misstep or set of missteps, even if a few of them have been worthy of a hearty head desk. At the end of the day, constructivity is what actually makes good things happen, so let's do that. Now, this topic always sort of sparks up when a controversy arises, and I never really think I've done it justice in the past. This time it's the merger of 6.2.1, i.e. the flying patch, into 6.2.2 and the subsequent time to release for those. Um, now, when it all started, players were told, oh, it would be weeks, but with the tentative release date being September the 1st, we are now looking at months, and that has understandably frustrated quite a few players who are looking forward to flying. Uh, first, a quick disclaimer on my own personal slant on this. I'm playing StarCraft 2 instead of Warlords of Draenor. I'm having an absolute blast with that game. I'm enjoying gaming now more than I have been in a decent while. This flying stuff doesn't affect me, but many people care, many people are excited about it, so I'm not going to brush it away. I think it would be kind of self-centered to do that, perhaps. But anyway, right after the announcement of the release date, there was a blue post saying it might not actually be that date, but they're very optimistic that it will be. This, predictably, led to quite a lot of dissatisfaction. Fair enough, people thought it would be very soon, and it turned out not to be. And this is just one example, but there are many others, you know, Ian and Corey saying different things, no flight being announced by a, via a Polygon article, various things like that. There have been some large missteps, and I think they could be fixed by having a better overall communication strategy. And this is where we get to the point of this video, which is all about how stuff could be done better, and just some ideas. So, for me, the prime example of this stuff done right is what Cloud Imperium Games, sort of aka Robert Space Industries, does with Star Citizen. On their site, they have a section called Comms Link, and they post regular updates for the players there, as long as things like uh, meet the devs, showing off work and progress art, and various things like that. They also have a weekly YouTube show called Around the Verse, which features various things from amongst their few different studios. What is more important, and I think more relevant to Blizzard, are their status update posts. These are regular posts which explain how development is going, and the best example is their recent delay of the first-person shooter module of the game by a number of months. This news was broke by the company chairman, owner, lead designer person, Chris Roberts, in a 2,700-word blog post. This post went into specific depth about the issues they were facing, including actual technical information. Since this was announced two months ago, we have had 15 more status report posts on the FPS module, with each talking about the problems they had solved and the remaining technical blockers that the project faced. Now, this is fantastic for many different reasons. First of all, and most importantly, RSI decided to own their bad news. This is one of the single most important things that you can do when something bad happens. Now, within one blog post, Star Citizen backers found out the bad news, and they were also given an ample explanation. They were kept in the loop as time went on as well, and that fosters a sense of being in on it with the developers, which is a very powerful psychological tool. The more you can make the relationship between players and devs us, rather than us and them, the better. But of course, there still needs to be a very clear delineation that developers make the game and players play the game. And that needs, you know, players can't really think, oh, we have the power to do whatever we want and basically design the game for them. Uh, that can't really work. You can give suggestions, but ultimately it's still their decision. Now, going back to Star Citizen, did any of the posts and updates and little things that they did really stop the torrent of people who shit post their game outside of their own community? Probably not, but what matters is that they address the concerns of their own players directly to their players. And I think there's an interesting parallel that you can draw between what they did there and the fact that, for an example, the No Flying Ever was announced externally, not really directly to the players. Now, it is more in Robert Space Industries, Cloud Imperium Games, whatever, it's more in their interest to have a model like that because they are the largest crowdfunded game ever, raising over $87 million. WoW was not crowdfunded in that way, and that extent of communication won't have as good of a return on investment for Blizzard as it would for RSI. Instead, though, you can learn lessons from it. First of all, have an established way to talk directly to the player base. They already have this in the form of dev water cooler blog posts. Second, they should post regularly enough so that people feel like they're in the loop. 
Thirdly, they should anticipate players' responses to certain bits of news and take appropriate measures to explain to players when that bad news is broken. Fourth, they should be more prompt in addressing concerns. RSI knew the FPS module would be late, so they made a post and have kept people up to date since. Blizzard seemed to have, in a way, sat on the fact that flying would be a little bit late, and by the time they spoke up, they were essentially in a no-win scenario, which, yes, it sucks for us, but it also really sucks for them as well. They don't want that to happen. Us having two or even three blog posts explaining why over maybe the last month or two would have been great. Now, to his credit, Lore did post and he mentioned a few different bugs specifically, and they do seem like major bugs that would, like, impact the play experience. For an example, being DC'd when you fly into your garrison from, from a specific angle, which isn't really a good thing to happen to you in your game. So, here's what I would do in their situation. I would have a section of their website where dev water cooler ish things, essentially blogs from them, get posted in a regular fashion. I would then ensure that any bit of bad news was released with a detailed explanation which included steps and what they are doing to better the situation. Even the odd detail goes a long way. I would then post incremental updates, perhaps every fortnight, which just talk about the pressing issues of the day. In short, communication which is more prompt, more planned, more detailed, and less reactionary. In the short term, I don't really think they can do a great deal to quell things, but I think if they adopt a solid long-term strategy, we could get to a state where they have a far better situation on their hands when it comes to community interaction. Also, not only is developer time limited, but it's also more expensive than most staff's time because devs are generally pretty decently paid. So perhaps it would be ideal to have this be a specific job for someone who is not a developer. Let the developers do the developing, let someone else handle this stuff. Bashiok's job post is open, and Laura's got prior community experience. There are people who could probably spearhead some sort of revamped communication initiative that could really help things out quite a bit. Now, there is one final thing that I want to touch on. Developers are hired because they are skilled at development, be that game design, art, coding, or being a server magician. They are not hired because they're excellent public-facing staff. Now, I do not think the developers should be expected to jump into the fray when it comes to social media. Some people who may be excellent at their actual job aren't cut out for that kind of thing or just don't enjoy it. Now, some developers like, say, Ghostcrawler are excellent at it, so having them take part is great. But ultimately, I do not think that expecting devs to pour their time into social media is healthy for the quality of the games that they make or at least all devs. Some probably should, because some people will be good at it, but if someone isn't good at it, well, it's probably best for them to just get back to making the game. Ghostcrawler posted about this recently, and I actually think it's something that people should definitely read. So, stuff like this is the job of the Blues, and I think they should come up with a more consistent and comprehensive strategy to community interaction. Finally, while a lot of this does depend on what sort of Blizzard does on their own side, from the community side, I do see a lot of people needlessly being dicks. And one of the things about being a complete dick when you're making an argument and making something that's really full of emotion and anger and sort of aggressive, like, wording and stuff, that's a really good way to undermine one's own argument because it sort of shows, I'm shouting my argument at you, I'm not really focusing on how right I am. That doesn't really help getting a point across. If you're ever making an argument, then the best way to do it is to be calm, to be rational, and let your own logic speak for itself. Now, I'm sure that most of you do that. I'm sure most of everyone does that. It's always the vocal minority who are dicks. So I suppose it's almost two-pronged. Don't be a dick. And um, most people aren't dicks anyway. So I think it all comes down to the idea of if someone is being an extremist when it comes to something, don't listen to them. Don't bother. They're not really worth it. All they do is muddy the water and they shut down the potential for discussion to happen between everyone. And I think when it comes to communication, it's all about a bit of mutual understanding, a bit of respect, and making your points based on actually thinking about things and, uh, you know, logic and all that good shit. Anyway, that's basically it for this video. I thought I'd just get the whole thing covered when it comes to communication. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any ideas of your own, throw them down in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.